Hello and welcome to uh, another instalment of our virtual interview series as part of the Exmoor Pony Festival. Uh, tonight's interviewee is Kim McLennan and we really hope you enjoy uh, this short interview. Hi, my name is Kim McLennan and I'm 50 plus something and I live in the northwest highlands of Scotland. My connection to Exmoor ponies is that I have five of my own. Um, I have bred two and now just basically have them running on my croft. They do the odd jobs here and there carrying hay. I've been involved with Exmoor ponies for over 12 years. Um, I've had ponies, um, been involved with ponies and horses all my life. Um, I was from Cornwall origin originally and went into pony club, riding club, did all the things it would have done and ended up basically going into sort of mountaineering. I loved the hills and ended up here in the northwest coast of Scotland and thought it'd be a lovely place to go riding. Um, so I had ponies up here. Um, uh, they had one that... that Died of colic, the other one went back home, which was a part of an Arab. And then I saw an advert for an Exmoor pony. I don't know why, but I thought um, I had an Exmoor pony, which I thought as a child was an Exmoor pony, but as my mother had said, it was a Dartmoor pony. So this Exmoor pony, whatever it was meant to be, I went to go and see it, which was uh, in Scorig, which is further north from here, another few hours. And that is my first involvement with Exmoors, is to go and see a free living herd. Uh, never seen a free living herd of Exmoors. Um, and it was, it was amazing to see because there's no trees, there's no hardly much shelter. The ground was so, uh, just looked really poor, um, but they survived really well. And it was, it was amazing to see them as a herd because their coloration, the, the way they blend into the black background. So that was my first involvement, was going to see this pony, who was called Ben Strome, and where the ponies live at the moment is Strome Moor. So it was meant to be. So Ben Strome was a two-year-old, um, had a little bit of background, didn't really know much about Exmoors, but yep, yeah, he, he was lovely and I wanted to take him, so I did bring him home. Um, then the involvement got more. I went back to Scoreg to see the ponies again and took some more ponies because they're very addictive. Um, but I have been down to Exmoor. I went down there to visit some people and I wanted to ride an Exmoor on Exmoor. Um, fantastic experience. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and different to see a different sort of countryside and terrain compared with what I've got up here. Um, my favourite thing... Um, about Exmoors is that they're hardy, um, they're really good for living up here in the northwest coast of Scotland um, and I do like it because they all look alike as well. I love their mealy noses and they have bags of character. Um, a favourite Exmoor pony uh, really is Ben Strome who I call Benji. He was my very first Exmoor pony and my introduction to Exmoors um, but he is my favourite because he has character, he his expressions on his face and what he tells you is amazing and he's a fantastic hill pony. The most embarrassing moment including an Exmoor pony is definitely Ben Strome again. Uh, I took him to a, a few local shows um, wasn't that local, it was probably about two hours away, to a riding club show and I wanted to do a ridden class. So I tacked him up, had him at the back of the trailer, I thought he was all right. I came around the front to get something out of the car and I came back around the trailer, he's upside down with his legs in the air because, as I found out, I did his girths up too tight and every time you do his girths up too tight he faints like a fainting goat, which I found out this is what happens every time I wanted to get on him so now I realize that you just do it up slowly but yes it was embarrassing because everybody was looking at him upside down saying well that's a typical Exmoor. Um, my proudest moment is definitely going down to the breed show in Perth taking my uh, homebred 
gelding um, Hamish. I've never really been away anywhere uh, showing, staying overnight, and certainly not with a yearling. So we decided to we take him down there, stay a couple of nights, and see how we get on. So it's about a five-hour journey with this little pony who had never travelled anywhere before. Um, because of his strong character um, and his attitude, he took it really well. And we also um, met his dad down there as well. And it was a proud moment when we had them together. They did very, very well at the show. I also just remember one of my other proudest moments was a few years ago, I entered a competition that Monty Roberts was running online uh, to do with natural horsemanship. And I thought I'd enter Benji for that one and do it completely bridleless. Um, so I did a little show and a little jump um, without a bridle, which is one of my dreams that I wanted to do with a pony. Didn't think it would be an Exmoor pony. And so I entered that as a competition and we won it. So Monty Roberts was there announcing who won it. And so it was, our, it was me and Benji and that's something I won't forget. The funniest moment with the Exmoor's is it was one winter um it was a very stormy night um wearing a hooli and i went up to one of the hill crofts to feed them had the buckets i thought in a place that uh, the wind the gust of wind wouldn't get it um they were eating quite happily until the gust of wind blew all the buckets uh four of them took off and one molly ran after her bucket and she actually got it back there wasn't much left, but she was determined that she was going to finish what was in that bucket. So yeah, I was, I was uh, laughing to myself that uh, the others ran away because they were spooked, but Molly, no, food was more important. Um, Favourite thing I like to do with Exmoors, I, I like to go for a walk with them, or I would like going onto the hills with them, having, taking a packed lunch or putting a little rucksack on them and just enjoying going through the hills, taking our time, um, just having the company of them. I think it, it's wonderful. It's more like taking the big dogs for a walk, but I really do enjoy them coming out in the hills for me. Um, I also like showing them off to the kids at school and they come down to see them to do art and science projects. And I like promoting them that way too. Um, they're good company, they're good fun, um, and for around here in the hills that we've got, they're incredibly hardy uh, and sure-footed. So, yeah, fantastic ponies. favourite photo or photos, um, there's hundreds of them, I really can't pick. Uh, so this is one of them, I made a little book again with Benji and this was one of the pictures or some of the pictures I took for my Monty Roberts online activity and just other silly little things I like doing um, with him uh, just because of it. he's just such a lovely pony. So these are just different things I did with him and riding him without a bridle has just been amazing. But yeah, definitely some of my favourite photos. But uh, my all time favourite is on my calendar. Um, just looking across to Applecross Hills, uh, standing up there. It's, it's an amazing place. He is so good at posing and he's give me lots and lots of pictures for calendars each year. So yeah, that's one of my favorite ones. Um, I do love being in the hills. So there's a moment that I actually no longer liked, but loved x -Fors. Well, it's been a long process because of Benji being my first one and not particularly an easy one to back or to ride for many years. But what I did do is I went back to Skorig, um, where the free living herd was living. And that's where I got Benji. Um, I went back basically because I 
there's something about them. There's definitely something about them. You want more than one. And going back, I thought I would take, uh, a, well, I wanted a filly. Um, thought I might breed from them, I wasn't sure. So I did go again and I went a quite a few times and brought back some Exmoors. Um, I did have seven at one time. Um, now I've got five. And there is, it's just something about them that you, it's an addiction, I suppose. You do love them. Um, they are something that are a challenge, very different. They fit into this environment that I live in really well. And having them on the hill and seeing them as a herd is, it's beautiful, it's amazing, it's lovely. Having one on its own, no, but definitely having a small herd is, is wonderful. Um, you have an Exmoor sort of family and the people that help you, the people that talk to you, I think are amazing. And for up here, being sort of relatively on my own with ponies, it's lovely to talk to people and have the Exmoor, what I call the Exmoor site, is, is brilliant for advice, friendly chat um, and what's going on as well in the real world. Um, who inspired me? Uh, is definitely uh, a lady called Debbie Davies, who lived in Skorreg. Um That was my introduction. I'd, I'd seen an advert for an Exmoor pony, and um, it sort of put me on into her direction. And I had to go to Skorreg, which was my first experience of a free living herd of Exmoors. Uh, it was a long trip in and it's a five mile walk in or a boat trip in. So it was it was definitely something I'd never done before. And so going to visit her and her the stories of living on this headland and having a herd of uh, ponies is quite incredible uh, due to like feeding down to vets. It's it's amazing how she coped and looked after them and bred beautiful um Exmoor ponies and and the stories and her passion I suppose from that I really got interested in them and got interested in the background the history I didn't know anything about them at all until I moved to Scotland even though I actually came from Cornwall so I learned a lot from Debbie I learned how passionate she was about them and and how she wanted to keep the breed going Wow, another amazing inspirational Exmoor pony addict. Thanks to Kim for contributing to our virtual interview series. And next week we meet David Wallace from the Anchor Herd. So see you then.